This video is going to be about the top five, count them, five worst financial mistakes I've made in my life thus far. And this video directly ties into my $400,000 mortgage payoff video at the age of 36. You know, for anybody out there that might have the misconception or per perception that everything has just always gone along swimmingly financially and, you know, th this guy uh, hit the lottery or ran into an inheritance or something and, and paid off a mortgage and now he's telling us how to be debt free, couldn't be further from the truth. I've, I've lost probably years off my life uh, due to the stress and worry, uh, and I've lost tens, uh, tens and tens of thousands of dollars, uh, as you guys will see here in this video here. So, um, you know, it's just make mistakes, but you got to learn from them, and hopefully you can learn from a couple of mine. But... All right, guys, let's talk about the first worst financial mistake that I've made in my life thus far. So it has to do with the purchasing of toys. And I consider toys to be anything that you're buying or purchasing that does not directly align with your medium to long term financial goals. In my case, it was vehicles. OK, I bought my first house, had a 1990 Toyota Camry with, I don't know, whatever it would have, 150,000 miles on it or something. Right. Ran perfectly fine. And then I started making mistakes and I bought a 2003 Mustang GT. Okay. I then bought a Monte Carlo and then for good measure, I bought a motorcycle as well. So now I have four vehicles and this is why I call this rule, the one rear end rule, four vehicles, one rear end. I'm paying insurance and these are really the financial implications of this whole thing. You're paying insurance monthly. I'm paying interest. I have a car payments with an S at the end. <laughs> And uh, basically three vehicles out of four are sitting there, you know, rotting in place while I'm not driving them. So, you know, if, if you're looking for financial freedom, be practical, get only what you need. Don't make the same mistakes I did. Don't buy toys, you know, try to enjoy your time and stuff like that. Um, but try not to purchase, you know, a fleet of vehicles like I did, like an idiot. Don't do it. Financial mistake number two. Loki, you going to help me with this one, pal? So financial mistake number two, uh, in short, has to do with my first home that I bought. I've purchased two homes in my life. Uh, this nightmare situation occurred when I was 24 years old, 2007. Bought a house for $322,000 at essentially the peak of the housing market. Boom. And it went boom. All right. Um, a couple years later, I ended up selling the same house for about $240,000. So um, there's a bunch of problems here. Number one. Timing, I don't think I could ever have predicted the market crash, right? If I bought a couple of years later, I'd look like a genius, right? I would have made all kinds of money. Um, number two is I was looking at it like it was a business decision, right? I'm only going to be here for a couple of years. So, um, and there was a bunch of pressure. There was no inventory, uh, very few houses to buy or even look at. And so I rushed my decision. And I made exceptions for things that I would not have allowed. Number one was in easement. There was an easement, you know, set it up for you. If I was driving down my driveway, there was a single driveway. Um, I would take a left to get into my house. And my neighbors would take a right. Oh, and by the way, the city uh, could come and go as they please on my property because there was a, an easement which allowed people or, or really the town access to my property, which was a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> number three, kind of the third part of this situation that was a nightmare was what I call the neighbors from hell. Uh, when I first moved into the house, I had these neighbors that were probably in their uh, mid eighties or so. Some of the best people I've ever met in my life. Um, you could not ask for better neighbors. Now, when they moved about three years into me owning the house, again, hindsight being 2020 with all the things that were going wrong and stuff, the market falling apart and stuff, I should have, I should have sold my house at that point, And I didn't. And what ended up happening was, the neighbors from hell moved in. Um, they'd be, uh, the husband would be on the roof of their house two o'clock in the morning with a nail gun going, uh, air compressor running, rap music blaring, um, police always at their house and stuff. It was, it was, it was terrible. And it actually cost me a couple of, um, when, when I had people looking at my house to buy the house, it actually cost me a couple of uh, potential offers as well, where people just said, you know, I'm not living next to those people. So it was just a nightmare. So the takeaway, 
don't time the market location 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 if you have an easement or something like that stay the hell away from it and then number three any sign of the crazy neighbors you know the truck up on blocks or something like that just stay away don't go there uh, it cost me tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars so don't be like me learn from this financial mistake number three this was <clears throat> Kind of another tough one where it cost me quite a bit of money. Um, if you watch my $400,000 mortgage payoff video at the age of 36, thing one of the things you should be taking away from that is the uh, time value of money and more specifically, you know, instead of paying down your principal and things like that, if you can invest that same money and not pull it out for three years, five years, ten years, that pile of money is going to be a bigger pile of money. So... Takeaway on this one is uh, purchasing single stocks. In short, I <clears throat> bought a bunch of individual stocks, Microsoft, uh, Home Depot, some smaller companies, and um, Pfizer, and I'm trying to think of some of the others, Philip Morris and stuff. Back in the 2008, 2007, 2009 time frame, um, I had so much going on. I couldn't give those stocks the individual attention they needed, right? If it went down 10%, you sell it or something, right? I, I bought a bunch of them, and then I kind of set them and forget them. And by the time I circled back on them and started paying attention to them, uh, just about every single stock I owned uh, realized about a 50% loss or so. Um, Takeaway here, invest in something smart or pay attention more than I did. Uh, when I say smart... I'm more broadly diversified now where I'm uh, invested in things like mutual funds, exchange traded funds, index funds. I'm not relying upon that single company. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm just saying if you're not going to pay attention like I didn't, y you know, you're playing with fire. So individual stocks, really think about that and go with something. I would say, I don't want to use the word safer, but more diverse is a good way because then you'll balance out the gains and losses. All right, guys, financial mistake number four. So Loki man, hey. You ready for number four? All right. So financial mistake number four. So this goes back to that house I had bought, $322,000 house. Uh, it was a 1930s Cape Cod style house that looked like an old lady lived in it because she did live in it. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't finished. It was, you could argue, you know, structurally, I, I don't want to say unsound, but it, it was... Um, one of those places you might say had good bones. So what did I do? I started working on the house. And uh, in short, I got to a point where just because of the time I had available, at that time I was working 12 hour shifts with about a three, three and a half hour commute uh, every day. Well, essentially I worked a rotating shift. So every day I worked, it was about a 15 to 16 hour day. Um, that's where the contractor comes in. I was never going to be able to you know, put some of this stuff back together for the next decade. I reached out, did my research on uh, contractors. Long story short, I, I got the short end of the straw on that one. And I ended up working with one of those um, contractors from hell, you might call it, where he got about halfway through the work, disappeared. Um, the total nut that I had, had actually funded this person was about $50,000 via bank loans and all kinds of stuff. Um, so I'm paying interest and all kinds of things. And um, basically, I, I lost that. Um, I still haven't been made whole on that. Uh, and it's about 10 years later. So my point in mentioning this is if you can do work yourself, I would go down that road. I just simply didn't have the time to do it, but I am handy. And then number two, if you know someone who knows someone who knows someone, I'd work with them as opposed to, I was quite frankly working with, you know, a stranger. I mean, I did, you know, contact the Better Business Bureau and all those other things that you do, but you just never know. Um, and I, you know, come to find out that down the road, this person had um, an extensive drug habit and everything else, and they disappeared into the sunset. And the courts basically, there was nothing I could do. Um, I'm just, just a, just a homeowner, just left holding the bag. So I lost my shirt on that one. So, you know, be careful of that, guys, with the contractors. All right, guys. So, financial mistake number five, the fi the final one here. This one. I would take notes during this one too. Um, 
toxic relationships. Okay, the short and sweet of this one is it could come in the form of your family, your husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend. It could be family. It could be your mom, your dad, your sister. It could be, it doesn't matter, just toxic relationships in general. It could be a coworker at work. Um, these people will bring you down and will devastate you. Um, I had a toxic relationship, um, one in particular, where I had somebody living with me who had uh, multiple jobs, and for the tune of multiple years, essentially as long as I knew the person, uh, never contributed a single dime to the house. Uh, I actually ended up paying their bills on a monthly basis. My monthly outlay at that first house was over $3,000 per month just to pay the mortgage, this person's bills, uh, and all the utilities and things that I had going on, right, for, for the house. Um, toxic relationships will uh, decimate you. Steer clear of these people. Um, if somebody is taking advantage of you or if somebody is not treating you right, get away from them. Do whatever you can to get away from these people. Um, I would estimate this one relationship, a couple tens of thousands of dollars over the course of years, you know, in paying their bills, um, listening to the sob story and just getting taken advantage of, you know, so be aware of that guys, you know, seek healthy relationships. So, all right guys. So we made it through the top five financial mistakes I made. Loki wants to play Frisbee, <laughs> right? Lokes. He's ready to play. Let me see if I can give him a nice toss here. <laughs> you got it. So, uh, top five financial mistakes, guys. Remember to hit like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Um, please try to learn something. Remember, it's okay to make mistakes, but it's even better when you learn from them and they become kind of that teachable moment that we all talk about. Um, try not to repeat the ones I did, uh, or at least, you know, minimize the damage. Because as you can see, I took quite the beating here financially uh, but I am living proof here guys that if you maintain your focus on that medium to long range target paying off your mortgage or being debt free you can do it but again this video stands as kind of a testimonial that it's not always going to be that that uh, smooth sailing you know there's going to be some rough waters out there and you can try to mitigate those those uh, uneasy times and, and challenges if you just take a couple notes here guys so Leave any comments down below and hope to see you debt free too in the future. Thanks guys.